Hey guys, more Bleaky here and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you the most effective method for spawning in objects and how we can access these spawned objects and control them, such as move them or access their components. So let's get started. Also, if I sound a little bit different, I've had COVID all week and my nose is still a little bit blocked, so I apologise for that. So when we want to spawn in objects at runtime, we use something known as instantiation, and that's primarily what we are going to focus on today when spawning in objects. In the Unity documentation, it's stated that instantiating an object means to create a clone of the original and return it meaning we duplicate a game object and place it somewhere we specify in the script. So all I've got in this scene here is a background and a platform and a little player that can run and jump, that is it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a brand new game object. So I'll press create empty and I can just call this game manager. Then from there, add component and I'm just gonna type in game manager again for a script name. Now in the script, what I'm gonna do is create a reference to a game object. So I'm gonna do public game objects. Then I'm gonna type in object to spawn. Then from there in our script, I'm going to type in if input dot get key down. I can just use key code dot G for example. So then when we press G, we can use instantiate. So now we need to pass in three fields. The first one being a game object, the second being a position and the third being a rotation. So the object we're going to be spawning in is object to spawn. The position will just be the transform dot position of this game object. And don't forget, this is the game object of the script that this is on. So this is the game manager script that is zeroed out on all transforms. So this will spawn in the middle of the scene. And finally, for the rotation, we are just going to use quaternion dot identity, which is just the original rotation of the game object because we don't want to change the rotation in any way. Now back in our editor on our game manager script, we have a reference to this object to spawn we just created but we have no game object we're going to spawn. So what I'm going to do is right click, go on 2D objects, go on sprites, and then just create a circle, call this spawn object. We can just give this a collider as well as a rigid body so it is affected by gravity. But now before we drag this object in, what I'm going to do is make it a prefab. Because now that means we can delete it from the hierarchy, select our game manager and drag in this prefab here. So now we can use it from any scene, not just this scene. And it doesn't have to be in the game at any point for us to spawn it in as it has been referenced directly from our assets. So now if we hit play, whenever we press G, you can see that a circle spawns in. And every time I press G, it is gonna instantiate a circle. And we can just create a tower of these and I can knock them all down if I want. So now that we've got the basics of instantiating, what I'm gonna do now is show you how we can spawn in objects at the position of the mouse. So if the mouse is over here in the top left of the screen and then we press G, then an object will spawn where the mouse is. So what we're gonna do back in our script, we need to create a vector three. So I'm gonna do vector three mouse position. So mouse pause. And then from here, I'm gonna set this mouse position to camera dot main. So we're referencing our camera and then we're gonna do screen to world point. Then inside these brackets, we're gonna put input dot mouse position. So what this function does here, as you can see, it says it transforms a point from screen space into world space. And then what we're referencing here is the mouse position. So then instead of transform dot position, we can use mouse pause. But this alone isn't enough because what's actually going to happen is our game objects will spawn behind the camera because they're going to be behind the camera on the Z axis. It's a little bit annoying that this happens, but it just means we have to do a little bit of extra code just so we can actually see it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another vector three and call this offset. And I'm going to do new vector three. I'm going to do zero, zero, 10, because we just want to add 10 units on the Z axis just so it is in front of the camera. So we're not adding anything else. And then finally, we can just do mouse pause plus offset. So now we're just combining these two vector threes to create this new one here. And now if we hit play, as we move our mouse around and we press G, you can see that wherever our mouse is, an object spawns in and the components on that object will instantly come into play. So you can see we have our box collider, we have our rigid body and the objects interact with each other nicely, which is perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can periodically spawn in these objects on a timer. So if you had an infinite runner where you needed to spawn objects in at one point in the game, every three seconds, for example, this is how you would do it. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna create a private float at the top here, just call this timer. And then in our update function, I'm gonna set timer plus equals to time dot delta time. What this will do, it will make this timer float go up in real time seconds. So now we can check if timer is bigger than three. The first thing we're gonna do is set timer back to zero. So this will be an infinite loop. And now what we can do is grab this instantiate line along with our two vector threes and just copy and paste them in here. And now we can get rid of this code. So we can just comment this out. So I'm gonna press control K and then control C to comment out this whole section here. A really helpful shortcut to have. And now if we go back to our game, 
If we press play here, you can see that every 3 seconds, wherever our mouse is, an object will spawn on it. And very quickly, just after a few minutes of this tutorial, you can see that instantiating objects is quite simple and very customizable. We've managed to make a little mechanic here, just from a very few simple tweaks. So now the very last thing I'm going to show you for today's tutorial is how we can create an object that spawns in and instantly starts to go towards the player. So the object will spawn in and slowly move towards the player's last known position when it spawns in and it will go in that direction, essentially until we tell it to stop. So this means we have to access the rigid body of our component, but how can we do that without accessing this actual prefab? We want to access the game object that has just spawned, not the prefab itself. So what I'm going to do here is create a game object out of this instantiation. So I'm going to type in game object with a capital G and just call this spawned object. So now we have spawned in an object and we've set it to this new instantiated object. And now we can reference this spawned object. So we can do spawned object dot get component. We can access its rigid body. And now from here, we can do whatever we want. What I'm going to do here is create two new variables, one for our game object, which is going to be a player and one for a float public float speed. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set this vector free direction equal to player.transform.position minus our spawned object.transform.position. And now from here, we can now go back to our rigid body and set the velocity equal to direction multiplied by speed. That means we can control the speed of our object in the inspector. And now if we go back to our game, you can see we have these components over here. I'm going to set the speed to one and I'm going to drag in our player. So now we can go to our spawned object and we need to set the gravity scale to zero. Otherwise, when it moves to our player, it won't be exactly accurate because gravity is going to be dragging it down. I'm actually going to set our speed to something like five here. And now if we press play here, you can see that every three seconds, an object spawns in on our mouse and goes towards the player's position. Even when we update the player's position, it will re-update when it spawns in. And that will be the position it moves to essentially forever. Except obviously it's colliding with objects, so its velocity is changing. So guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful and gave you the basics. If you want to see me do a more complex tutorial on this topic, do let me know and I'll be happy to do so. But on that note guys, I'll thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope it was helpful. Make sure to subscribe if it was. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.